Our top focus this morning, the U.S. government panel of advisors to the Food and Drug Administration in the United States have voted to endorse the emergency use of the Pfizer and BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. With this, the FDA is likely to approve the vaccine for mass use within days. The distribution and inoculations are expected to begin immediately thereafter. The committee voted 17-4 in favor of the use of the vaccine. The known benefits of the vaccine outweighed the risks that it poses. The chief executive of UMass Memorial Healthcare said that this is a historic moment and the best solution to get us out of our current situation and help us save lives. The panel also discussed concerns raised by two reports of serious allergic reactions among vaccine recipients in Britain. The FDA Commissioner Stephen Hahn earlier said that the vaccine's label would include details about who the vaccine was recommended for and who should not get it. They also discussed what to advise pregnant women who were excluded from the study. Healthcare workers comprise a large number of women of childbearing age who would be among the first in line to get vaccinated. The FDA concluded that there was not enough data to support or contradict whether the vaccine should be given to pregnant women. Now remember, the United States is currently the worst affected from the pandemic. It has reported more than 16 million COVID-19 cases and the death toll is now inching closer to the 300,000 grim mark. Now for more on this news development coming in from the United States, our correspondent Rachel Silverman joins us from San Francisco. Thanks so much for joining us, Rachel, on this broadcast. Now tell us more about the vaccine rollout plan in the United States and who will be given priority in the country. Um, first of all, the, the, uh, the vaccine hasn't been completely approved. The right. independent committee of experts who testified about it today uh, recommended it for people mm -hmm. over the age of 16, and the FDA is expected to approve the vaccine. It could be within hours, or it could be in a couple of days. But there, but some of the vaccine has already been sent to cities across the United States, and after it's moved uh, to to the locations where people will be able to get the inoculations, the first people on the line uh, to get the inoculations will be medical workers and first responders. And after that, it will be people who live in nursing homes, elderly people who live in nursing homes, and the people who take care of them. Now, discussing who should get the shot, mm -hmm. that, was, um, that was a big part of the uh, testimony today. Um, it, it was indicated that in the clinical trial, they did not test the, uh, the vaccine on groups of, right. various groups of people, including children under the age of 16, um, pregnant women, breastfeeding women, immunocompromised people and people who have had uh, severe reactions to vaccines in the past. So those are some categories where still some more work has to be done and there will be still some more studying and there will be some consultation certainly with, um, with the United Kingdom about their experiences with um, giving the vaccine to those particular groups. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, Rachel, that brings me to my next question. Even though a vaccine against coronavirus is offering us a light at the end of this tunnel, there have been several reports, as you just mentioned, about extreme allergic reactions to the, some of the volunteers across the UK who have been administered this uh, vaccine or those who have volunteered to be part of the study. So will this dissuade people in the United States from taking the vaccine? Well, it, there are, and there, it may well indeed do that. And there are about, uh, there's a big problem with people who are afraid to take the vaccine regardless. Only about 53% of Americans say that they're willing to take the vaccine. So right. there will need to be a big public relations campaign put mm -hmm. in, uh, in order to get people to trust in the vaccine so that they can take it and that we can then develop herd immunity from the, uh, from the vaccine itself. Right. Now, you just mentioned that, you know, inspiring public confidence in the vaccine is extremely crucial for the vaccine to actually be successful in tackling the pandemic. We earlier heard of former presidents Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, saying that they will, in fact, volunteer to take the first few jabs to inspire public confidence in the vaccine, including president-elect Joe Biden. Will we see that happening soon? Well, your guess is as good as mine, but I think we will indeed see that happening soon, although the three of them don't qualify as, uh, as health workers. Um, but uh, that would, it, certainly I think we would see that after January 20th. Mm -hmm. um, 
it will be important to uh, to get the people to to people who are dubious about the shot side effects. It will be important to get them to trust. Right. My final question, uh, Rachel, a recent study said that rich nations or more developed nations were hoarding vaccines and not leaving many for the developing or the underdeveloped nations. Do we have any clarity on how many vaccines the U.S. has actually ordered? Uh, the, the U.S. has, uh, there are conflicting, there's conflicting uh, uh, reports about exactly how many vex, how many shots will be available. Um, there are millions will be available in December and then uh, more tens of millions to be available in January and then February. But um, everybody is going to need to get two shots. That means, you know, two doses and twice as much. And meanwhile, in the next 60 days alone, another 180,000 Americans, we're being warned, could die from COVID-19. Already some 300,000 Americans have, um, have died because of the disease. Right. All right, Rachel, thank you so much for your inputs and thank you for joining us on this broadcast.